eminent scientist, Dr. Dinesh Srivastav, as chief executive of uh, nuclear fuel complex Hyderabad, Dr. G. Amrendra, former director, materials group IG Car, and presently Raja Ramana Fellow in NFC, Dr. D.K. Sinha, director AMD and chairman INS branch, INS Hyderabad branch, additional directors of AMD, who are all physically present with us uh, in this uh, uh, Dr. Homi Baba Auditorium, AMD Hyderabad, and so many other dignitaries who have joined us online from different parts of the country, officials of INS Mumbai, executive committee members of INS Hyderabad, and many students of various schools and colleges who have joined online, and my dear colleagues and friends, a very good afternoon. We are here to attend the sixth webinar of Atma Nirbharda in Science webinar series of AMD in collaboration with INS Hyderabad branch, part of the nationwide celebration of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav 2021, which is part of 75 years of independence of our country. So this series, in this series, we had uh, prior to this, Dr. Anil Kakodkar uh, as chief guest, Dr. Anil Kakodkar, former chairman AEC, Dr. M.Y.S. Prasad, uh, former director, uh, Shar IS, ISRO, Dr. A. Chidambaram, uh, former uh, chairman AEC, and Dr. Harsh Gupta, former director NGRI, and Dr. R.A. Badwe, uh, Tata Memorial Center, Mumbai, as speakers. Today we have um, another uh, chief guest as a speaker. And uh, without further delay, I, it's my pleasure and privilege to invite uh, Dr. D.K. Sinha, Director AMD, to the stage to deliver the welcome address. Namaskar. And uh, as uh, everybody knows that today again we have assembled here for another lecture of the series, which uh, yeah, AMD INS has started uh, with the help of uh, NFC and ECIL. And this is a very popular series as far as I am getting the feedback from all the quarters. On behalf of INS, I welcome the today's uh, speaker, Professor Dr. Deepankar Chatterjee, Honorary Professor, Molecular Biophysics Unit, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, and he is Honorary Professor Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research, Jakkur, Bangalore. He is a renowned scientist in his field and of course uh, basically started career from chemistry and landed to biology and lot of work he has done in uh, CCMB and then he went to Indian Institute of Science and probably he is uh, a scientist of its own uh, uh, expertise. So, INS, uh, welcome the reputed scientist of uh, uh, special stretcher at this uh, moment in the INS lecture series, Professor Dr. Deepankar Chatterjee. And as you know that this series is uh, mostly, we are inviting the eminent scientist who have been awarded the Padma Sri. So, he is a Padma Sri awardee also. We are welcoming you, sir. And we are very eagerly waiting for your uh, uh, lecture, which is going to enlighten us various aspects of biology as well as the chemistry. Nowadays, the virus is there who is uh, troubling us. Probably you may throw some light on this virus in addition to your normal uh, lecture, what you have thought of in this. In addition to that, today we have with us our uh, 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 special guest, Dr. Dinesh Swasto, CNFC, who has uh, come physically to participate in this function, and uh, Dr. Amrindra, Director, Material Group, IGCAR, who is also available with us in physical presence in this hall. In addition to that, uh, many official colleagues, physically they are present in this Bhava, Homi Bhava, Bhava Auditorium, and many are attached directly uh, with their uh, PCs in the working place. As uh, this series is continuing through virtual mode and we have uh, given opportunity for many people to join with us through virtual mode and many are 
being seen here, say plus 35 are <laughs> attached here, virtually connected with us. Many are seeing through YouTube, as we have provided the YouTube channel, uh, streaming through YouTube channel. So many schools, many colleges are attached here with those who are connected uh, are those who are known to AMD uh, because of uh, its presence in various parts of the country. The school colleges, students and their uh, teachers are also behind this uh, lecture series. And uh, uh, when the lecture series continues, we will be seeing many, many people, those who are getting attached uh, with this. Uh, right now, I am seeing many uh, names in this uh, uh, lecture series uh, who are available with us from NFC, many are there, from ECIL, many are there, from INS Mumbai, and many DAE colleagues, retired as well as those who are serving colleagues are available in the uh, our uh, uh, laptop uh, screen. Uh, special mention I would like to make, uh, Sri Parihar Sahib is attached directly, and GMDC colleagues, uh, MECL colleagues, many extra departmental people, those who have expressed their interest, they are also attached with this uh, virtual uh, platform. So, uh, with this, I welcome all of you in this uh, Bhava Auditorium for a very scintillating lecture and a different knowledge, which probably being uh, in different field, we are not aware. And we look forward, Professor Dr. Deepankar Chatterjee, for a very, very scintillating lecture. Thank you, and thank you all. Uh, so it gives me immense pleasure to uh, introduce Professor Chatterjee uh, to the audience, who is the uh, chief guest of uh, this webinar. Uh, Professor Dipankar Chatterjee has done his master's in chemistry from Jadavpur University, Calcutta, and then com uh, completed his PhD from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, in molecular biology. Later, Dr. Chatterjee has worked in research as a research associate in Stony Brook University in New York till 1983. On returning to India, he joined CCMB Hyderabad and established a group there to work on the regulation of gene expression in prokaryotes and worked there till 1988 and he has risen to become the deputy director of CCMB. Professor Chatterjee's main focus uh, of study was on the survival strategies of Escherichia coli bacteria under nutritional stress. Upon moving to IISC Bangalore in 1999, his group worked on myobacteria and these studies have tremendous impact on effective eradication of TB. Currently, Professor Chatterjee is an honorary professor at Molecular Biophysics Unit of IASC, Bangalore, and also honorary professor of JNCASR, Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research in Bangalore. Professor Chatterjee has authored more than 200 research articles in scientific journals. He has also written a book entitled Basics of Molecular Recognition, published by CRC Press. He also has a US patent to his credit. He is a member of many science academies and holding many fellowships, to name a few National Academy of Sciences, Indian Academy of Sciences, Indian National Academy, Indian National Science Academy, the World Academy of Science. He is conferred with many awards Homi Baba Fellowship, Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Prize in Biological Sciences in 1992, Ranbaxy Research Award in 2000. Astra Chair Professor, J.C. Bose Fellowship of DST, then Jadavpur University has also conferred him with a DSC degree in 2018. He is also the recipient of the fourth highest civilian honor of the country, Padma Shri, conferred by Government of India. With this brief introduction, I welcome Professor Dipanka Chatterjee to deliver his talk. Please, sir. Thank you. I am sharing the screen. Okay. So, as a I was telling you the pro whole lecture will be emphasizing on the development of the student program and the scientific program, how to develop their aptitude. And then in the big science, in very important science scientific development, particularly related to biology, how our program, our post independent scientific program helped us in developing the pro developing these particular areas. So, in order to do that, I was telling you that all the students who are graduating come at the initial time. At the beginning of their career should have a, a proper chance because chance is the most important thing. 
for the development of science for any individual. How much chance one can give early, independent of their financial connection or whatever, so that you can pick up a brilliant mind for a particular area which, where the particular mind has an aptitude. So it is a necessity of life that you have a chance. It is nothing to do with our destiny or whatever is the environment or whatever. So for that, a philosophical overtone is there. A very famous Nobel laureate, Jacques Bono, started this area called Chance and Necessity. It's available, you can read that book where you will see that evolution, that life is only a result of natural process of pure chance. Nothing more than that. So I'll try to elaborate that. This is the book I was talking about, and this is the man who talked to you. The philosophy, and I will show you how small chances fall open how they help people. And I try to connect this particular concept with the scientific plans in the tree. Then he showed my interest in this particular area and interest in giving this talk to you in this particular title. Principles of vaccination, which you are every one, two, three vaccine. This is a basically the chance observation is an accidental observation. An accidentally inoculated chicken with all culture of chicken cholera bacterium and found that this chicken did not die when inoculated with fresh cultures several weeks later. That is the antibody is being developing, right? When you get infected with COVID, if you have already taken the vaccine, you don't get very severe effect. Fresh culture is a culture. So now COVID vaccine is the attenuated vaccine that is a co-vaccine coming from the city Hyderabad. So this is a pure chance. And so this particular concept was developed. And there is a very famous institute in Paris. Chance famous So would able you should see to it is how chance and opportunity different habit can be given to a particular student. I go on emphasizing this particular idea and people say talent and luck. The success is nothing but talent plus luck and great success is a little more talent and a lot of luck. So success and the, it depends upon the concept. The talent and luck together very important to the of you. So, returning from holiday on September 3, 1928, Fleming began this look at this, this work of his, what he, he did, and he found in colonies, step, step, yes, he had the it on the dotted town and on the colony. And when he found that this, there is a penicillin, there is a mold which is killing the bacteria and identified them as a penicillin as, as the mold has secreted some of the inhibited bacterial growth. So he mentioned that I have been trying to point out that in our life chance may have an astonishing influence and I have may of for advice to the young laboratory workers. It would be this never neglect an extraordinary appearance or a happening. It may be usual is in fact a false alarm that leads to nothing. But many a times but many, on the other hand, be the clue provided by the faith to lead to some important advances. This is the observation top two top scientists, Pasteur and Fleming, Alexander Fleming, talked about the, how the chances change to major discoveries of their life. We should maximize the chance because it's a necessity. But how do we maximize it? That is very important. To maximize the chance, we have to give different organized approach. We have to take a country should take the organized approach. Germany took this approach by scrapping the tuition fees in all universities. The move makes higher education more affordable and accessible to all the state of society. Germany can do that because they don't have many poor people, number of position, and though the, the people who are not very well off after the war. But the small country, small number of population, half of them died in war during the war. 
So they could maximize this development of the human being person by distributing the wealth very nicely among the country, among the population. Is it possible in a country like India? It's very tough, very tough. Linda Noble meeting is one of those meetings where they, they take the students from schools and colleges and give them opportunity to mix with Nobel laureates for two weeks and exchange of minds, exchange of ideas, help them to develop further. So these are the kind of things different countries try to do. In India, it was told as soon as we, after independence, Nehru was a great person for the development of scientific learning, scientific temper. In convocation address in Allahabad University in 1946, one hour before independence, one year before, Nehru said it is science alone that can solve the problem of hunger and poverty or in stagnation and malnutrition or with literacy and obscurism or superstition and demand, deadening customs or right, rigid tradition and blind beliefs. A vast resources going to west of a rich country inhabited by a starving million. So he knew in the IITs when he inaugurated the IIT Kharagpur, the first IIT in 1956 in, in West Bengal, he said this is the modern temple of India. Absolutely so. So development of a scientific mind, development of children, and can only happen by development of scientific culture, rational thinking, and these are the kind of chances one should give. First step was taken in 1957, 10 years after independence, March 22, 1957. Nehru presided over the CSR governing body meeting and CSR started now there are 40 more labs. You can see this, all luminaries were sitting, Bhatnagar was there, the first director general. And how the science, scientific development had came during that whole process. So India put a lot of effort to create the scientific infrastructure. But how to select the people? Nehru was strongly promoted of promoting sciences in India. With Homi Bhabha, he tried to develop nuclear program you are all familiar with. Reactor to atomic energy style division, Trombay to the nation. And looking at the grinding of uranium rod fuel in the Canada, India reacted atomic energy establishment in Trombay. So he was very interested to develop. So he knew his mind was in the right place. The development of scientific advances has to be done to the development of the technology and the science of a country. But where from the manpower will come? How do you get that? Sivi Ramon our most established scientist of the country says that one of the India's eminent scientists said there is only one solution for India's economic problem and that is science, more science and still more science. Because as you develop it, you do it. But who will do the science? How do we get trained manpower? Can we deny chance to a school, young population to explore the world of science and make India a leading nation in terms of production? Now tell me, I will show you something now, you think over it, you will find it is so attractive. 1947, we, are in the, we got independence. By 57, we started CSI. Another five years, 1962, India was in a very bad economic situation. War with China, the relationship is bad. There was no development on the food program. Those in 1962. We are depending on PL 480, American money, American with a lot of string attached, bad quality. It gave us few impetus. We had the Amul, the milk production, we had the MS Saminathan's economy, the agricultural revolution, rice, dwarf rice development. And in associated with that, we came Indian Initiative National Science Talent Program. In 1962, can you believe it, within 15 years of independence, I looked for it and I did not find a single country in the world, whole world, there is not a single country, within 15 years of developed independence with so much of economic problem, they had a program of National Science Talent as equivalent, where young students 
after a, after a you cannot give it to everybody after some selection examination they are giving books they are giving monthly stipend and provided they maintain first class they will continue to go do so till they finish their phd till they finish their ms master science so the science program was developed that way and there is if you look around the world in our country and also abroad there are many people there are many students who are big luminary big scientists including nobel laureate like the this ribosome nobel laureate who are venkat venkat ramakrishnan they are all product of national science talent they receive national science talent pool later it in the institute of science in our own institute the program became kbpy kishor vigyanik prasthana yojana with more money and more book grant summer program the even the national science talent program has a summer summer program where students can visit different institutes different laboratories this many of them might have come to your place work in the summer months for some time they will give some fellowship and in that they will develop the scientific skills this is the manpower development i told you cs has started atomic program started isro started but the raw material of that came from giving some money from the government source national science stand program started in 1962 by roy samet one of the pioneer of the indian science program and few others then kish then kishor vigyanik postgraduate which is a very successful program now department of science technology started a program called inspire which is still continuing and very developed and i said and i see undergraduate programs so iits i said iits all these are coming then kbpy national science talent program these development Have become so prominent for the development of the manpower. The question many students face in their mind when they go abroad or from abroad, they come should come back to India or not? Brain drain and brain gain. We hear all the time. There's a movie like Shadesh was developed on this, and it's a very nice message in that. Similarly, there is a family family compulsion, founding opportunities in India. these are the different programs which make a person who is in abroad to think twice think thrice whether they should come back and work in this motherland but if we have the scientific program developed in that way then chance what we give we give it to the students they will obviously help them to think in the possible ways and give them opportunities to grow and to develop further so it is becoming a very major research and design development hub the science allocation in the 12 5 year plan which covers 12 12 to 12 17 nearly three times as large that of 11th plan which covered 27 to, to 2007 to 2012 and 2000 next one planning period in a different mode now it is giving giving more money more help for the development seven new iisrs in the institute of science education and research started i am sure you are familiar with it this is developed in the scientific program mohali nagaland nogal nagaland is in plan mohali bhopal pune tirupati tiruvananthapuram bayrampur kolkata and these are scientific institutes developed undergraduate program in the like hood of institute of science and biology research and their development how the program can go ahead and to create manpower to carry out research and many of them will be joining different top level institute like yours in different parts of the country <coughs> IIT is now there are 23 IITs we started with very few but now there are so many look at this many of them are being 
looked after by the elder brothers who have generated, who are already established, like Mandi, like Jammu, Palghat, Panjim. These are all new IITs which are coming up, Dhanbad. But it's already established IITs are helping them to develop further. And they are providing our students, student pool. So the program which Government of India started after independence has developed matured so very well. And this is going in a proper direction to create Atmanivar. I am very proud of this because Atmanivar Bharat is not the slogan. India has done enough to show how Atmanivar Bharat can be generated. How different space science, creating CSIR, creating atomic power, atomic program, creating ISRO is not enough. Where from the manpower will come? So what I am trying to show here that the manpower should come, should be indigenously developed, or they should come back like what I showed in Shadesh and to develop, to join the program in India and develop this, all our efforts. National Institute of Technologies, during the ISRO, during our last satellite mission, it was mentioned by the minister that it is not only IITs, even National Institute of Technologies, which people do not consider very as strong as IITs is wrong. They're equally strong and sometimes if not better. They have contributed for the nation development exceedingly well. And NIT is one of those cases. This is little old data, five years old. June 2016, the country has 769 universities and research laboratories. They have assured funding here on a yearly basis, high quality and motivated students to work with you. So they, these are the programs which are helping continuously the, making the country So science, engineering and research board, science engineering research board, a CRB or KST. They are consolidated salary equivalent of eight per month. This has gone up to seven lakhs per annum. And then Ramanujan Fellowship. Now Ramalinga Shamiri Entry Fellowship. Ramanujan Fellowship comes from DST, Ramalinga Shamiri Fellowship, DBT. Reentry means they can come back to India from West or any other countries where they got advanced training and they get they can come back. They consolidated a salary, some grant money much bigger than what NSTS offers and help them to get a permanent position to develop their career and to help participate in this program. The fellowships have now increased. This is old data. This is further increased. I think it has gone up very much. So we have for biomedical research, many more developments are coming like that. Indian pharmaceutical companies' revenues are also going up very tremendously. From 2005 to 2020, you can see the development of pharmaceutical revenue in US dollar, in US dollar, in US dollar billions. And this development is all because of the help we are giving for the nurturing the young talents, young minds, and properly guiding the industries and laboratories to the right direction. So the efforts to develop an Atmanirbhar Bharat, which we are talking all the time, it is, it is really Ajadi Kamal, Mahatsham, 75th year of Amrit Mahatsham. Because without this kind of efforts, without this kind of input, you cannot have any celebration, you cannot have any development. Manpower development is the most important power in the life. Biotech industry, 2016 to 2025. You can see the estimates and in many of the cases, now these are futuristic when this slide was made, but many of the cases, this have now crossed the limit. It has gone further up. So the development of different industries from the, at least from the biology side, I can tell you, is in many fold is growing up and there is no better example of Atmanirbhar Bharat. Ajadi Kamrit Mahatsya, no other better example than what we have done with COVID. 
it is mind boggling. Never ever in the history of, if you, now we are all bothered about our infection, masking, not being able to go out, not being able to travel. But sit for a while and think what the achievement the country has done. Never ever it happened within a year of the infection. We are marketing two vaccine programs and we are inoculating more than one billion people. It's unthinkable for even pox, polio. We are still struggling to vaccinate all the people worldwide. But India has shown in the case of COVID. In today's newspaper, I see they will be available in shops now. And both Bharat Biotech and Siram Punawala, Covaxin and Covishield have done a remarkable job in Pune. I don't know how they managed to do this, but it's amazing effort, absolutely amazing. And this is done all by the Indian trained products, which are supported by the education program, which I showed you from the beginning. So 47 onwards, there is a tremendous effort. Every government, no matter what is their political philosophy is, every government look for the development of Indian science and Indian students for the product development and helping the country. Medical device, both scientific companies, the development shows foreign direct investment coming. So there is a financial angle to this and this slide shows you the different companies also how they help the financial development, economy development of the company. Now, position wise, where do we stand? Here I will try to change the gear of the talk a little bit. So far, what I was telling about the sanitary chance and necessity are the two important ingredients of the development of scientific program. Chance is a must and we have given chance to our students because there is a necessity by giving rise to different academic programs, scholarship programs from the government of India, even when we are very poor. And it gave, it yielded fruits. Now we see, and COVID is the ultimate pinnacle on that, that we can do the job if need be. And it is really on the brink of 75th year of independence. We can show that where we have achieved, what we have achieved, where we have reached. But I ask the question here, how seriously scientifically the Indian government, Indian scientific programs are taken internationally? We have done enough, but are we taken seriously? There are issues, but what I will focus on this today, I'll just keep this in mind and you can tell your children, you can tell your students when you go back, that given an opportunity, we can show that major discoveries, major achievement under very poor condition, what Indian contribution. We know the story of Ramanujam, all of us know, the man who knew infinity. But we also know, I will show you examples, the contribution of Indian scientists for the development of major observation in biology science in next couple of slides. We must increase the number of fundamental publication because we that is our world judge you. Emphasis on quality, excellent teaching capability, target to become a superpower, brain drain or to brain drain. That is the whole con controversy I already showed you. Our target to become a scientific superpower, China has become or we should want to become. Emphasis on quality, excellent teaching capability because without teaching science is very difficult to do. So a scientist should participate in teaching. But teaching doesn't mean addressing 100 students in an auditorium. Teaching teaching your students, teaching your junior co-workers how to do and what. Take a summer program, visit different laboratories and show how you can do that. So these are the very important aspects of life. So participation in a proper teaching program Take initiative to develop a teaching program, take initiative to develop it, and you start doing excellent teaching capacity, emphasis of quality of science and increasing fundamental publication. So I'll go to the three areas which I told you, and it is connected with COVID also in a way. 
There is a central dogma of molecular biology that DNA makes RNA, RNA makes protein. And why I am showing this? Because I will show you three different observations related to DNA and protein and development of treatment, medical treatment, where Indian publications, Indian's contribution was enormous. DNA is a basic beginning building block of a cell and cell makes everything, all the things. DNA was discovered in 1869 by Michler, Frederick Michler, and then Oswald, McLeod, and McCarthy, they showed is hereditary material. Any biology student will know that. I will not expand it further. And from a X-ray fiber diffraction pattern, Morris will there is a periodicity, there is a gap, there is a cross, which shows a double helix, and structure of the DNA was discovered. This Orson and Creek, the Nobel Prize, discovery of the century, guided all of us, and we know both of them visited particularly CCMB Hyderabad when I was there. And they came to India many times. And how this DNA structure tell, told us the development of molecular biology of 1960s. This is the prize they got on Nobel Prize said that the hemoglobin, myoglobin also got it. And very famous picture. This is 1962. This is the paper, you know. I must emphasize here, that's why I say the quality of publication is so important. In this paper, you will can count the words, it's not even thousand words. 1953 is worth reading the paper. I underline, this is for the students, I keep it ready, that this paper tells us the brevity and the humble, how you can write a scientific paper and present it with the utmost crisp contribution towards sentences to describe a particular most important molecule of the century. And this is the structure of nuclear acid. This, the paper started with those sentence we used to suggest a structure for the salt of nuclear acid. And at the end of the paper, they said, perhaps this explains the replication model of the biology. So, that's how the whole paper was developed. He said that it has not escaped our notice that the specific pairing, base pairing immediately suggests copying mechanism. How the continuation it flows like a river and the evolution happens continuously. Central dogma, DNA makes RNA and makes protein is very important. And we all know from, the, all of us know about, when we talk about viruses, that viruses can be DNA viruses or RNA viruses. And with the help of the host, they make the protein and they create all the problems of infecting the host. We know, we are aware of it because of COVID today. Now, we can have this controversy or RNA alternative splicing, RNA editing. I know go very much into the details of this. But single gene may code for multiple proteins and the editing can happen. So that's how the whole thing proceeds. And DNA is made up of DNA quick acid bases, purine and pyrimidine bases, adenine, guanine, and cytosine These are all school level knowledge now and the sugar and phosphate, phosphodiester backbone. These are the two chains run. And you have change in one base, will change reading of the protein, RNA synthesis and the protein synthesis. So therefore, one mutation, one change of base can create a different functionality of the protein. So these are the structure of the DNA postulated by the Orson Creek model. This was considered one of the major important discovery and I told you this is the most important discovery of the last century. For years to come, now it will be like that because this gives rise to the basics of biology and development of the cell. 
What is the stability of the wedge structure? We know this is the stacking interaction, hydrogen bonding interaction, phosphate phosphate repulsion, tremendous chemistry here, which gives rise to the stability of the molecule. And how the base pairing happens between purine and pyrimidine gives rise to the whole stability and the development of the biology of the cell. So this is Francis Crick said why it is called a dogma. The dogma means DNA makes RNA, RNA makes protein. But once it goes to protein, it gets locked into the protein. Protein can never go back to RNA and DNA. So DNA to RNA, RNA to DNA is reversible. RNA to protein, nothing is reversible. Because this is this is the dogma of the whole biology. That once you make the protein, you are locking in the system to a particular motif. No further things can happen on that. There's a simple chemistry involved in that. There's a covalent bond for the protein, amino acylation of protein, but I'm not going to get details. And anything with the covalent bond is a, gives rise to stability. Much longer fields very how the how they how the packing the DNA vaccine in the cell. And this is the mode of all packing which happens in the case of the DNA. And if cell, finally a cell will come, which will have the major constituents of the biological body. There are defined conformations of DNA. These all come from the Watson Creek model, A, B, Z, etc. So, but the point is, this is a major publication. I told you I'll show you some publication and India contribution. 20th century DNA biology has revolutionized. Today we can manipulate DNA, modulate its expression, and thus alter its function. But, but for the protein biology, it is just the beginning. And Ramachandran plot is one of the pioneering states in this regard. This is the famous G.N. Ramachandran. I do not know how many of you have heard of him, but this is the person in the University of Madras and of, later in Bangalore. Did an enormous amount of work and showed international level work. It is fortunately enough the credit for this invaluable tool. The pioneering steps in today, every branch of protein biology is under the influence of Ramachandran plot and goes to Indian scientist G.M. Ramachandran. What he showed? He probably, I showed you a paper in 1953 in Nature, the top scientific journal, basic science journals. This paper came in 1954 in Nature, Structure of Collagen, a protein, triple helix protein. And here I show the discovery, what is protein, is discovered by Bargerias in 1938. It's defined as a biological polymer comprising of numerous amino acids linked this recursively through peptide bonds and between a carboxyl group and amino group adjacent to amino acid to form a long chain with defined site groups of each amino acid protruding from it. So characterization at this level of amino acid bond and bond and the torsional angle. So these are all chemistry which tells you the what is the length of a bond, what is the torsion, what is the orientation of one amino acid with respect to other. And bond do not vary to a significant extent that making torsional angle the most significant parameter. This is a matter of great understanding. All Ramchandra talks about that bond angle, bond length do not vary. The chemistry is limited with the chemistry of the, each molecule. A torsional angle between two successive amino acids are very important in this respect. So this is the structure of the molecule and you can, there are, it shows that there are certain Planarity imposed on it because of a tautomerism of this double bond character of the zero and H peptide bond. So there is a restriction in the rotation, and therefore the structure is have a defined geometry, defined structure. So different bond length and bond angles are shown, and the trans and cis configuration and the rotation has been shown here. And these are the torsional angles we talked about phi and shy, that is around general plot. And this is the man, he is lived between 1922 and 2001. He showed what is the triple helix. And he gave some diagram, beautiful two-dimensional representation of the allowed conformation 
which is true now every respect every protein you study you have to show the structure is validated you have to validate the structure by ramachandra plot he showed certain structure which is allowed it goes on and on like that and he showed the favored confirmation this favored confirmation etc an enormous work has been done on this but all came from one particular paper which started from 1954 nature paper of kolaji and he showed the top view the side views of the things so the different form of structure i show here so this came in 1954 again very close to his independence how much contribution indian science has in this is international science quality of paper is enormous but it makes so much of name it tells us that it is possible to do this kind of work even with less money with clean thoughts and proper encouragement and the kind of encouragement Atma Nirbhar Bharat has done by giving encouragement to the students that in future I'm sure many such observation will come but our condition is now much better than what these people have faced. So I told you the two cases one is DNA double helix and other is a collagen triple helix of protein and verification of Ramchandran structure in this possible way. We can talk mostly about stability, geometry, everything on this from this Ramachandran plot. Stability of the protein by replacing the high energy residue by mean of side diatomaceous. So you would take an amino acid and change it immediately, you know, mutation. Structure changes. How the structure changes? COVID vaccine or new egg. You see a change of a particular amino acid mutation gives rise to certain properties. And you go back to Ramachandran plot and see what is the alteration of the structure happening. You know, this is this is how the beauty and the influence of Ramachandran plot today for the development of scientific program. And nutrition analysis, identification of critical residues, these are all very important in this aspect. So the nutrition analysis has been, Ramachandran plot has been extensively used in the case of development of vaccine for polypoid molecules. So it allowed, allowed confirmation, disallowed confirmation. The two examples I have shown you. One was from Cambridge, one was from India, and multiple confirmation. Protein interaction, drug designing, another very area which comes directly from the Ramachandran plot, one can do. So, you know, it's also really implicated in drug design and dreaded diseases like swine flu, and I told you COVID. So, this is also now has come. So you can say that how development of science has come from Indian contribution. So finally, Ramchandran plot tells you protein modeling, drug design, thermal stability, protein folding, protein interaction, nutrition analysis, everything from one center observation, which came in 50s from India. And epitome of Atmanirva Bharat, how strong we are in scientific programs and how in what esteem the whole world looks at us for basic science. Third one I'll give is the last one in my talk. Another person, not many well-known people know him, Shambhunante. He is from medical college, he's a doctor in Bosch Institute, Bosch Research Institute in Calcutta, 1915 to 1985. Even nobody knew that his discovery was so important. In 19th, he was nominated, nominated for Nobel Prize twice, but missed it. But people think whole cholera research, introduction in cholera, the cholera research, infection of cholera, started from Shomunante's work. And it shows enterotoxicity of bacteria, free culture, filter of nuclear cholera. Nature again, for 1959. So on 50s, I show 53 DNA, 54 collagen, 59 cholera toxin. He showed that enterotoxicity, toxicity of bacteria, free culture, filter of nuclear cholera. That nuclear cholera, if you culture, the, the toxin leaks out. And it is in the 
in the culture free filtrate of the globality is a protein molecule and naturally to counter it you have to have a proper methodology to handle it infection because of the salt imbalance happens so this is another paper area another paper which shows an international level science but the development of the scientific program in india brought us in the top level in the world to recognize our our so they contributed tremendously in various things and a issue on karen science was developed 1990 it showed it because such a pathetic thing is much less recognized than jn abhichandran but his contribution to science basic science is enormous so with these three examples i will try to close my talk but what i wanted to tell you basically and if any students are present here who are looking forward to the future that india is a wonderful country to do science you can do science for the development of the nation in various ways and being a basic scientist myself i emphasize how the basic science i started the basic science and for that you need a chance and necessity i connected it and what are the kind of chances you are getting every time every year and more and more more and more will come in future and how the how different iits icers and different educational program and scholarship programs inspire kbpy how they help students to develop their career and how basic science other than the applied applied science which we call it there is no applied science good science and bad science i call it applied science is very good science and they develop the country so well they give rise to direct link to the human development nuclear program is so so these are doing but basic science also we have a name in this country and what all things are necessary quality science good publication and how we have shown in the within 20 years of independence how we generated what which draw international attention even today so i close my talk here and thank you very much for your indulgence sir thank you uh, for uh, your wonderful presentation on uh, uh, the indian science program uh, for the student community especially so i would like to um, uh, request all our uh, uh, you know audience to round of applause uh, to appreciate his talk in fact uh, amd um, and uh, ins hyderabad chapter is indeed very grateful uh, to professor chatterjee to uh, readily accept uh, for readily accepting our invitation to deliver uh, this lecture and uh, as a token of our love uh, we wish to present uh, uh, professor chatterjee a uh, moment to virtually sir so i would like uh, to request you to accept it please thank you very much i accept it thank you very thank you sir uh, so let me invite uh, dr t s sunil kumar uh, additional director r and d uh, and uh, secretary ins hyderabad chapter to propose the vote of thanks thank you krishna kumar uh, dignitaries physically present here dr dinesh rivastava chief executive nuclear fuel complex dr amarendra uh former group director ig kar and presently the raja ramana follow of uh, nfc and dr dk sinha director amd co additional directors charavanan mamalan and last but not the least our beloved speaker dr professor deepankar chatterjee who told us about the chances are necessity and the opportunities have to be i mean developed being a scientist who has turned into a teacher he could talk in terms of science what is the importance of the science and what is the importance of science and what is the necessity to bring teaching as the one of the important tools to make opportunities in india and other activities ins hyderabad chapter hyderabad branch has been organizing this webinar series and we started with nuclear science and technologies starting with uh, 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 dr kakotkar and followed by the, the space technologist so this 
applied research and technology in nuclear and the space we have covered at that time. And we had a talk from the medicine field. Then it has come to also gone to an earth science about the natural calamities and things like including tsunami predictions. But this is where the synergy between the academia and the science has come because the, from uh, starting from the Indian I mean, uh, CCMB here, uh, Professor uh, uh, Chatterjee has moved over to IAAC. So he is the right person to talk about the science, development of science for the Atma Nirbharada and its combination to teaching in the faculty, what is the importance. Thank you, sir, for the, uh, that uh, elucidated uh, speech about the importance of science and applied science particularly and the teaching. And on behalf of INS Hyderabad branch, I express our uh, gratitude for giving your valuable time for this, uh, this function. I also express our thanks to Dr. Dinesh Srivastava, Dr. Amarendra, Dr. D.K. Sinha, and most importantly, there are a lot of students and uh, INS members and uh, others have joined, including former director, uh, di AMD Dr. Uh, um, Sri Parihar, Dr. A.K. Rai, former Radhishan Director Uma Maheshwar, Dr. P. Krishnamurthy, Deputy CEO of uh, NFC, and so many other members have joined us. And so a galaxy of students have joined in YouTube and uh, also in the uh, WebEx link. Nearly 100 uh, subscriptions in both the places have taken. I thank one and all. And this program could be made successful because of the active support of the executive, executive committee of the INS and also the team, the core team, which has been actively doing the required arrangements. I thank one and all. Thank you so much. So before we wind up, I would request all of you to stand up uh, for the national anthem.